Dennis Carl Wilson, the second child of Audrey and Murray Gage Wilson, was born on December 4th, 1944. He spent his childhood in Hawthorne, California with his brothers Brian and Carl and their parents. Dennis's role in the family dynamic, as he admitted, was that of the black sheep. Dennis Wilson was the most likely of the three Wilson brothers to be beaten by their father. Dennis, who possessed a lot of physical energy and a confrontational personality, frequently refused to engage in family sing-alongs, and he also avoided vocalizing on the early recordings Brian recorded with a portable tape recorder. Dennis, on the other hand, would sing with his siblings late at night in their shared bedroom. Dennis began playing piano at the age of 14 and learned to play boogie-woogie genres. Audrey Wilson, the Wilson's mother, forced Brian to include Dennis in the Beach Boys' initial lineup. Dennis began taking drum classes at Hawthorne High School in 1960. The Beach Boys formally formed in late 1961 with Murray taking over as manager and scored a local hit with their debut album Surfing, which Brian wrote at Dennis's request. Even though the Beach Boys image was built on California surfing culture, Dennis was the sole surfer in the band. Dennis collaborated with Brian's colleague Gary Usher in early 1963. They released the song RPM backed with My Stingray as a duo, composing, producing, and performing as the Four Speeds. Dennis moved out of the Wilson family home in March 1964 and into an address in Hollywood. Brian informed his bandmates in January 1965 that he would no longer be touring with the group for the foreseeable future. Dennis performed Do You Want to Dance and In the Back of My Mind. The former was the first song with a Dennis Lee to be released as an A-side single, reaching number 5 on the Billboard Hot 100. Dennis had started experimenting with LSD by 1966. On Pet Sounds from 1966, his drumming efforts were restricted to the tune That's Not Me. He performed on Vegetables, Holidays, and Good Vibrations during the Smile Sessions. Van Dyke Parks, the project's songwriter, attributed Wilson's inspiration for the title of the proposed album track, Surf's Up. Dennis started creating songs for the Beach Boys in the late 1960s. Wilson recorded the original song, I Don't Know, in January 1967, but it was never published. Wilson recorded a piece named Tune Number no. 1 in December for a solo project to be published on Brother Records, but it was also cancelled. Wilson's first significant release was Little Bird, which was released in April 1968 as a B-side of the Friends record. Little Bird's outro incorporates a modified tune from Brian's unfinished 1966 song, Child is Father of the Man, which was originally planned for Smile. Little Bird and Be Still, both co-written with poet Steve Kalanish, were included on the album Friends. Dennis made his debut as a producer on this group's second album, 2020, from February 1969, which included his original songs Be With Me and All I Want To Do. Many of Wilson's unreleased recordings from this period were published in 2018 as part of the collections Wake the World, The Friend Sessions, and I Can Hear Music, The 2020 Sessions. Wilson was traveling through Malibu on April 6, 1968 when he saw two female hitchhikers, Patricia Krenwinkel and Ella Jo Bailey. He saw them again a few days later and he scored them to his house at Sunset Boulevard the second time. They became recognized as members of the Manson family later on. According to Manson himself, he had met Wilson at least once before, at a friend's San Francisco home where Manson had gone to get marijuana. Wilson connected Manson to musicians he knew, including Bird's producer Terry Melcher. Manson recorded several songs at Brian's home studio, but the recordings have never been heard as of 2021. Wilson wrote a Manson song for the Beach Boys in September 1968, first name ceased to exist, but modified as Never Learn Not to Love, as a single beast I released the following December. Wilson's Ferrari and Mercedes Benz, which had been driven to a mountain near Spawn Ranch, were both destroyed about this time. Fearful of the situation, Wilson distanced himself from Manson and walked out of the home, leaving Manson and his followers behind, and later took up residence in a basement flat in Santa Monica with buddy Greg Jacobson. This is what Mike Love has to say about Dennis Wilson's relationship with Manson and stuff that Mike Love himself you know, what it was is we had we had dinner and then they uh, adjourn to the a uh, den and Charlie turned on a strobe light and passed out it was supposed to be LSD which I never had so I declined and um, I didn't join in that party there was we were the only people Bruce Johnson and I went for dinner at their invitation 
And we were the only people with clothing on. The Tay LaBianca murders were committed by members of the Manson family in August 1969. Wilson declined to testify in Manson's defense. Instead, he was interrogated privately by a prosecutor, Vincent Biliosi. Dennis continued to write songs for successive Beach Boys albums, including Sunflower in 1970, which contained the single Forever, and three additional songs written by Dennis. Dennis Wilson and Rumba produced their first piece of solo work on December 4th, 1970, an obscure single issued solely in Europe and the UK under the name Dennis Wilson and Rumbo. On the A side was Sound of Free, a song about liberation, and on the B side was The Romantic Lady, also known as Falling in Love. American Spring later covered the song and released it as the B side of their single Shine Away. In 1971, Dennis starred alongside James Taylor and Warren Oates in the film Two Lane Blacktop as the mechanic. The film depicts the driver, played by James Taylor, and the mechanic driving aimlessly across the United States in their 1955 Chevy, surviving on money earned from street racing. That same year, he injured his hand badly enough to prevent him from playing drums for some time, so he got replaced for a couple years. The live album The Beach Boys in Concert from 1973 features only Dennis on stage among thousands of fans on the album cover. During the three-year recording heist following Holland, Dennis's voice deteriorated markedly. By then, his onstage antics including shrieking occasionally disrupted the Beach Boys' live shows. In 1974, concurrent with the success of the 60s hits compilation Endless Summer, Dennis returned to his role behind the drums. And according to Dennis's biographer, John Stebbins, it was this year that he co-wrote the lyrics and modified part of the melody of You Are So Beautiful at a party with Billy Preston. By 1979, Dennis had amassed a stockpile of songs he had written and recorded while factions within the Beach Boys became too stressful for him. He then approached James William Gershow, owner of Caribou Records, who stipulated a structured recording process before signing Dennis to a two-album contract. Dennis released his debut solo album, Pacific Ocean Blue, in 1977. Although it sold relatively poorly, peaking at number 96 on the U.S. Billboard chart, it outperformed the following two Beach Boys albums. Dates were booked for a Dennis Wilson solo tour, but these were ultimately canceled when his record company withdrew concert support in light of the album's commercial performance and a perception that he was becoming increasingly unreliable. He did occasionally perform his solo material on the 1977 Beach Boys tour. Despite Dennis claiming that the album had no substance, Pacific Ocean Blue received positive reviews and later developed a status as a cult item, ultimately selling nearly 250,000 copies. The album remained largely out of print between the 90s and the 2000s. In June 2008, it was reissued on CD as an expanded edition. It was voted the 2008 reissue of the year in both Rolling Stone and Mojo magazines and made number 60 on the British LP charts and number 8 on both the Billboard catalog chart and the Billboard internet sales chart. Pacific Ocean Blues follow-up Bamboo began production in 1978 at Brothers Studios in Santa Monica with a collaboration of then Beach Boys keyboardist and Dennis's close friend Carly Munoz as songwriter and producer. The first four songs officially recorded for Bamboo were Munoz's compositions It's Not Too Late, Caustic Opinion, All Alone, and Under the Moonlight. The project was initially scuttled by a lack of financing and the distractions of simultaneous Beach Boys projects. Bamboo was officially released in 2008 along with the Pacific Ocean Blue reissue. This material was also released on vinyl in 2017 without Pacific Ocean Blue for Record Store Day. Two songs for the Bamboo Sessions, Love Surrounds Me and Baby Blue, was lifted for the Beach Boys' L.A. album, Light Album, from 1979. Dennis and Brian also recorded separately from the Beach Boys in the early 1980s. These sessions remained unreleased, although they are widely bootlegged as the Cocaine Sessions. Dennis misused alcohol, cocaine, and heroin in the years that followed. On September 3, 1977, he told Rolling Stone that he had left the Beach Boys after an altercation on airport tarmac. Disputes were settled two weeks later and Dennis rejoined the group. At one point, Brian's then-girlfriend and nurse, Carolyn Williams, accused Dennis of luring Brian to buying $15,000 in cocaine. Dennis was violently beaten at his house by Brian's bodyguard, Rocky Pamplin, and the Wilson's relative, Stan Love, when they learned of the event. They were fined approximately $1,000 for the attack and Dennis sought a restraining order. 
As the Beach Boys pressed Brian to return to Eugene Landy's 24-hour therapy program, Dennis was advised by friends that he would be the band's next target, much to Dennis's surprise. He was proven incorrect when the rest of the band issued him an ultimatum after his last concert in November 1983 to go into treatment for his drinking issues or be barred from, from performing live with them again. He was homeless and lived a wandering existence at the time. He went to a rehabilitation center in Arizona for two days before checking into St. John's Medical Center in Santa Monica on December 23rd, where he stayed until the Christmas evening of 1983. Dennis went to a separate hospital after a violent confrontation at the Santa Monica Bay Inn to be treated for his injuries. He was freed several hours later and allegedly began drinking immediately. Unfortunately, Dennis drowned on December 28th, two weeks after his 39th birthday, and Marina Del Rey after drinking all day and diving in the afternoon to retrieve his ex-possessions. They had been tossed overboard at the marina from his boat three years earlier during his divorce from a few years ago. And then Dennis, according to forensic pathologist Michael Hunter, died as a result of a shallow water blackout. Dennis's remains were buried at sea off the coast of California by the United States Coast Guard on January 4, 1984. At his funeral, the song Farewell My Friend was played. Dennis's widow, Sean Love, stated that Dennis preferred a sea burial and that his brothers, Carl and Brian, did not want Dennis cremated. Only Coast Guard and Navy veterans were authorized to be buried in U.S. seas without first being cremated at the time, but Dennis's burial was made feasible by the intervention of then-President Ronald Reagan. Later on, Brian expressed his dissatisfaction with the arrangement in 2002, thinking that Dennis should have been given a conventional burial. Thank you, Suzanne Vilegit for the video ID, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced your last name, but if you guys want your video ideas to be done like her, let me know in the comments below and I will most likely do it. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.